WGEM's Sports Extra. It was a fully loaded night of hoops with a shootout going on at Quincy Notre Dame. Rivalry battles across the river, but let's start off right here in town at Quincy High. The Blue Devils were celebrating senior night this evening, and WGM Steve Lewin was there to see the celebration and capture all those highlights. Steve, take it away. With only a few hiccups, the Quincy High Blue Devils are having a banner year. Tonight, they went after win number 23 with United Township of East Moline in town. It's going to be a busy 18 hours with the Panthers in town tonight and the matchup with East St. Louis tomorrow afternoon over Normal. This was one of the largest crowds of the year. Since it's the last home Friday night game of the year, they celebrated senior night. These senior Blue Devils have won 28, 26, and tw so far 22. Right off the bat, it was Tyler Sprick with a three, and then Camden Brown knocks one down. Quincy off to a great start. Look at that pass from Bradley Longcourt to Keyshawn Thomas. Now let's reverse that one. This time it's going to be Keyshawn kicking it out to Bradley. Uh, that was a great one right there. Quincy high up 18 to two after one quarter. You're not gonna believe, look at that. That is 5'10 Cameron Wires with that tip in. That'll be a dunk in 20 years at the high school reunion. Ralph Wires made a nice play right there. Quincy High was rolling. They were up by 20. Bradley Longcourt scored nine of his 17 points in the third quarter. And here's one more. That's Camden Brown throwing one down. Downtown Camden Brown. And the Blue Devils go on to win it easily. Final score, Quincy High wins 65-32. to 32, And they're going to have to sleep fast because tomorrow in normal, in an Illinois shootout, they're going to take on East St. Louis, so it's going to be a dandy. Back to you, Brandon. Thanks, Steve. Across the river in the Flower City, Palmyra was taking on South Shelby on their home floor. And this has turned into quite the rivalry over the last few seasons. WGM's Victoria Bordanga was there tonight and joins me back in the studio to break it all down. Thanks, Brendan. The last time South Shelby and Palmyra faced off was back in December for the Monroe City Championship game. And if you remember that game, that's when Claire Williams hit a buzzer-beating three to win the game. So you can imagine that tonight was just going to be as competitive and it was. And of course, as expected, when you have a good game, there's going to be a big crowd on hand. It was a slow first half for both teams, but Palmyra played a little bit more aggressive. Here's Elena Lohman sinking a three early on to give the Panthers a lead. And talk about resiliency. Belle Rouse, she's going to miss the three-point shot here, but she gets the rebound and plows through traffic to get the putback. Palmyra led South Shelby 22 to 16 going into the half, but coming out of it, it was all South Shelby within a matter of minutes. Hannah Gaines and Callie McWilliams hit back-to-back -back threes to make it a tie game at 22. Now going over to the fourth quarter, at one point the Lady Birds were up by seven points, but the Panthers rose up and dominated. When in doubt, send it down low to Kendra King. This shot from King brought Palmyra up by two. A few minutes later in this clutch shot from Anna James and great defense is when Palmyra really started to pull this game away. After a suspenseful four quarters, Palmyra is going to take this one 50-44 to and will improve to 15-3 on the season. The 18-1 Panthers were also playing up against South Shelby tonight, and I love to see the pink out to raise awareness for breast cancer. That place was packed with pink tonight. And what a better way to start than a shot from behind the arc. Here's Ryan McKinney draining the three. He gets hyped with a little three to the head after that shot, too. Love it. More from Palmyra Hudson. Bach finds Jeremy Edwards down low, and the senior gets the easy bucket. South Shelby made something out of nothing here. They somehow keep possession and dish the rock down to Noah Wilt to finish it off in the paint. Palmyra wouldn't let up, though. How about a highlight from Mr. Hudson Bach? He buries the money ball. And why not some love for his senior brother, too? A few plays later, and here's Bear Bach driving down the lane and connecting at the rack for the pair. When it's all said and done, Palmyra will defeat South Shelby 47-25, to and the Panthers will improve to 19-1 and on the season. Looking at other scores in Missouri and Boys basketball, Monroe City defeats Bowling Green 81 to 45. Mark Twain fell to Van Far 78 to 78 to 47. And then the La, La Plata Tournament can took down Putman County 80 to 67 for third place. On the girls' side of things, Monroe City defeats Bowling Green 52 to 22, and Highland falls to Centralia 51 to 27. Brendan, we may be lucky enough to see Palmyra and South Shelby battled out for a greater reward come district, but for now we'll have to wait and see. I'll send it back over to you. Thanks, Victoria. Back in Quincy, the Raiders were hosting their annual shootout. The student section was getting after with a large crowd in the stands for their battle tonight. First possession, Noah Lunt 
comes away with the steal. He's able to turn on the Jets and cap off the fast break on the other end. Raiders weren't done adding to their early lead. Jace Allensworth lets it fly from the corner and watch as he splashes home the triple. Quincy Notre Dame was feeling it from downtown. This time they set up Tyler Bozart. He launches this one and why not come away with another three points for his team. The blue and gold were sharing the load offensively tonight. Allensworth finding Lunt driving to the hoop and he'll finish at the rag for the pair. Let's check in on the QND golf superstar Bo Eftink. We know he can stroke it from the fairways. How about from beyond the arc? That one's money from distance. Raiders would continue to fire on all cylinders and they would take down Madison 54 to 47. Wes Hancock was also in action at the shootout. They were taking on Kip Charter out of St. Louis. Louis Siegfried was physical from the opening tip. He'll bully his way down low, gets the bucket, plus the foul spinning down the hoop. But how about the saying, if it fail once, try, try again. Titans Cooper Knowles cleans up his mess by collecting the second chance points. The inside game opened up the long ball. Gage Scott connecting on the tray right there. But it was the Lewis Siegfried show who dominated in this one. He works his way in the lane and is able to cash in another bucket. He would have the game winning basket as Wes Hancock comes back and defeats Kip 58 to 56. The Quincy Notre Dame girls were also in action at the shootout. They welcomed in Clopton. Ari Bueller finds Jenna Durst running to the hoop and she comes away with the early basket. How about some more work in the paint from the Lady Raiders? This time Tristan Peeper showing off her post moves as she tacks on two more points. She was feeling herself tonight. Why not from way downtown? She'll spot up and bury the big time three for QND. The Lady Raiders would keep on finding ways to score. This time back to Jenna Durst showing off her speed, connecting at the rack for the easy layup. Fast forward just a little bit. Check out these moves by Ari Bueller. She crosses up her defender and puts this one right on the money from the elbow. Clopton, they played well, but they didn't have an answer for QND. The Lady Raiders win this one 44 to 39. Liberty was looking to defend the nest as they took on Payson at home tonight. The Eagles were flying high early on. How about Noah Clouser getting loose in the break? He fights through some contact on the other end, but is able to find the bottom of the net with a nifty layup. More from Clouser. This time he'll sneak by the defense on the inbounds pass. He'll knock in the easy bucket off the glass. Liberty would find their group from downtown later on. Gavin Fessler gets open in the corner. He tests his luck from downtown and he knocks down the three ball. Payson looking to keep pace with the Eags. They go down low to Wyatt Nice and he'll bury the turnaround jumper. This Greg Altmix Liberty team has played some good ball as of late and we're able to end Payson's three game winning streak holding on to beat the Indians 50 to 48. In boys action in Illinois, McComb gets by South Fulton 50 to 32. Unity defeats Southeastern 56 to 60. And the girls action Central Southeastern defeats Rushville Industry 69 to 39. And other boys scores Bushnell Prairie City defeated Peoria Heights. Up in the Hawkeye State, Kiaka coasted Mount Pleasant in hopes of locking up a conference title. It was senior night for the Chiefs this evening with a good crowd on hand to watch Kiaka take the floor. Tramel Smith would get the Chiefs on the bird for it first. Here he is off the opening tip. The purple and white were on a mission. Nice passing finds Chase Eklund wide open in the corner. He launches this one and he knew it was good as soon as it left his hand. Kiaka looking to work the ball down low. They find Jackson Clark on the block. He overpowers defender for the tough earned two. However, from that point on, it was bombs away from distance. Brenton Horde lets it fly and splashes home the triple. No one was stopping the Chiefs on offense tonight, and they would take down Mount Pleasant 57 to 38. The girls were also in action looking up to pick up the win on senior night. Right from the get-go, Boatman finds all Gilberts on the row, and she finishes at the hoop for the easy layup. Boatman was the focal point on offense tonight. The Chiefs go right back to her. And after thinking about it for a minute, she pulls the trigger and drains the long tray. She got it done on offense and defense as well. Kendra swipes this one. She'll take a coast to coast for the easy score. It was smooth sailing for Boatman in this one. Keacock on the break again. She's able to put this one in to keep adding to the lead. Mount Pleasant couldn't keep up with Keacock offense and they would go on to defeat Mount Pleasant 83 to 13. In other Iowa scores, boys basketball action, Fort Madison defeats Washington 56 to 51. It was another great night for basketball in the Tri-States. We'll be back out here next weekend to break down all the action. That's all the time we have for sports. Thanks for dropping by and have a great night.